My name is Nick Evans. I'm the director of the Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence for the Dynamics of Language, CODAL for short, and I'm also a professor of linguistics at the Australian National University. Pretty accidentally, I became a linguist. I'm a fairly typical Australian in having had rather mediocre language teaching at high school and very bad teaching of grammar that put me off language completely. I was doing science really was what I wanted to do. Later on I had a friend, Cliff Goddard, who invited me to come along to a class uh, on Aboriginal languages taught by Bob Dixon. And everyone was sitting there in the class, there was an old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, uh, a, a story about the origins of death, uh, and that was coming out. I'd never really heard an Aboriginal language before. People were just going through it, translating it, and I just suddenly felt this surge of, uh, I guess, mystery uh, that, oh yes, that's what I want to do. Uh, so then I changed, changed course and became a linguist and have never looked back. And then again, Bob Dixon rang me up and said, look, I've just heard from an Aboriginal community in Queensland on Mornington Island, and they've sent a letter asking if a linguist can come up and uh, help record their language, Kaidil. So I went up there and I received the most amazing welcome. Just really from the first hour, people were taking me into their lives. I started off, I was really wanting to understand one language and how it worked. And Kaidot is a language that breaks a lot of rules. It does things which languages aren't supposed to do. Uh, so my PhD topic was writing a, a grammar, a description of the language. And then again and again, there would be things in the language that didn't you know, you couldn't find another language that was doing it. So I had to work out how to deal with it. I'd be reading around and saying, surely there's somewhere that's done it or someone's written about it. So then you have to think about how to enlarge the framework that makes it possible to describe how languages are. When we launched our Centre of Excellence, on the first day, I said, language is too important to be left to the linguists. Uh, that's sad. I, I, I felt bad inside saying that because linguists should naturally do all of that. But that hasn't actually been how the field of linguistics has been. It's been much too narrow. We bring in a lot of other people who are concerned with language as we have done within, within our centre. So we've got anthropologists, philosophers, psychologists, computer scientists, roboticists, um, evolutionary biologists, as well as linguists all dealing with language. That's why I use this broader term, language scientist. One could say there's never been a more exciting time to be a linguist or a language scientist in the sense that the field is really waking up. And I think it's very fresh. There's a lot of questions. Uh, finally, uh, in this uh, International Year of the Indigenous Languages, there's more respect and recognition being given to all the marvellous uh, languages in Australia and in our region and around the world. And linguists are beginning to take that more seriously. But I think also at the same time, uh, the centrality of language to IT, to the web, to natural language processing means that people aren't seeing there as just being a, a monolingual web or digital world out there. And big companies like, like Google and so on are also attending to uh, linguistic diversity. At the same time, there's also a lot of new technological innovations. We can know much more about what people are thinking as they speak through eye tracking and you know, different sorts of uh, EEG scans and other things. So a lot is now coming together that makes, us, makes it possible to look down into what speaking a different language really means in terms of how you learn it and how you think and attend when using it in real time.